Dad, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Uh, everybody in our chat, they're all saying, buy the hype, buy the hype, buy the hype. Is Marty Brenneman buying the hype? Well, I'm buying the hype. I'm buying the excitement that, that exists right now over this ball club. I, I still think I'm more of a realist than most people are because after last night, they have 100 games left. Um, they're not even at the halfway point yet. But what I see uh, is, is something that is generated by so many of these young players that the Reds have either drafted or have traded for. And I think that's a thing that you can't miss on. Now, you're not talking about guys that have come from other organizations uh, with a, a couple of exceptions. I mean, Will Benson's 24 years old, and I agree with what you said earlier. Uh, in many ways, I'm more happy for Will Benson and what he did last night than I am for Ailey De La Cruz. Ailey De La Cruz is a can't-miss prospect insofar as that term applies to certain players. Uh, a lot of things can come into play. But this guy is considered to be, he came up the best prospect in minor league baseball. Will Benson's been up. Will Benson's been down. For him to do what he did last night and do it as emphatically as he did it was, uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, still, you know, you have to temper uh, your long-range prospects, long-range meeting now until the end of this 23 season, uh, with something, you know, as great as these kids have been. You mentioned the starting pitching, which has been nothing short of disastrous of late. Uh, the ongoing absence of Nick Lodolo, who I still maintain is the best of the three pitchers when he's healthy. And a bullpen that's very suspect. So, But I think this is exciting. I think the fact that there are people who are still saying, you know, we've, 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 we've bought into you for so long and we've been – disappointed uh you mentioned the size of the crowd last night people are gonna it's gonna take a while to get those people back again well since you brought that up there are other things i want to get to that are more important but I, but i do want to ask you this because uh, you know i think you and i have i'm not going to say disagree i i i think disagree um, you know, I, I've never bought into the notion that Cincinnati is this great baseball town. I think just because you've had baseball longer than any other team uh, doesn't mean that you're a great baseball town. Now, you have to give fans something to want to cheer about and spend their money on to go down and watch them. But just the fact that the Big Red Machine never drew over 2.7 million fans in a season when they had the best team arguably in the history of baseball, to me, that's an upset. But neither here nor yep. there. I still maintain that it, if you're down there in the Reds' offices, Dad, you go 22,000 on the kids' debut, and then you go to 19,000 last night. To me, they're never going to say it publicly. To me, it has to be a disappointment. So I, well, I, I don't know about that. Uh, like okay. I said before, even the coming of Ellie De La Cruz is not going to change those naysayers in an instant oh, okay the kids up here so now we're going to come out and we're going to come out regularly for the rest of the season i still think that you're going to have to prove a pretty sizable uh, segment of the reds following uh that this team is definitely on the right path that what they have uh, preached for the last two years is something that is going to at the end of the day come to fruition with an impactful club in the central division and in the national league as a whole uh, so I just think you're going to have to live with that um, and, and, and hope that what we're watching right now is simply the beginning of something that once it gets to where they want to be, will be continuous and will be relatively long lasting. OK, De La Cruz comes up two nights ago. Uh, yeah. Then before the game yesterday, uh, some of the media got together. Nick Crawl was down on the field talking to people and all of a sudden, this is something you and I have been talking about back and forth for three, four weeks. Look, this Central Division, it's not any good. It's downright bad. Um, and all of a sudden, you're five games out. You've got all this momentum going. And Nick Crawl didn't say, yeah, we'll make a deal. But he said, I wouldn't rule anything out. Well, I think he said what he had to say. I still maintain reading what his statement was he talked around it. Uh, because he, he alluded to every possible option. That is, you know, making a trade, bringing somebody up from within, 
uh, activating a player who's not been available. He covered everything. Uh, so I think he answered it in, in a cautious manner, which I think is, is part of Nick's DNA to begin with. Uh, no, make no promises. Uh, leave the door open for the possibility that something could exist in the event that this ball club is very realistically in some type of hunt in the National League Central come the end of July. Um, when you look at um, – when you look at – it's ironic, I think. And and I look, I know it's only a couple of days, so I don't want to go off the reservation on this stuff. But but you and I have also had this conversation. You know, Davey Johnson used to say all the time that, hey, if I have to pick between a pitcher and a position player, I'm taking the position player. If you're talking about making a trade or something like that, because obviously you're getting a guy that plays every single day. When the Cubs built this thing up to eventually win the 2016 World Series, you know, they brought up young offensive stars and then went out and spent some money on pitchers, the John Lesters, the uh, Ariettas of the world, guys like that. Uh, they bring in a role as Chapman to pitch out of their bullpen. Um, you know, it, it makes you wonder a little bit with Lodolo out, Green's kind of out again, Ashcraft hasn't been very good, Williamson's eh, you know, Weaver's eh. It, it almost makes you wonder if, 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 this is starting to resemble that a little bit. Well, I think if I were in Nick's shoes and I made my mind up after consultation with the powers that be that we are going to go out and our priority is going to be um, a pitcher. In all likelihood, a starting pitcher with some experience and, and a, uh, a track record that's pretty good and, and a great DNA. Um, at the same time, I think in order for you to reach that decision, I think you have to know that Hunter Green is back on track, that Lodolo is healthy and pitching well, and Graham Ashcraft, for whatever the reason, uh, is, is going to be the Graham Ashcraft that we saw when the season opened. Uh, it, then, then I think a starting pitcher would, would, start, would help this club immeasurably. But if all of those pieces to the puzzle are still up in the air, I, I don't know what giving up young prospects that may one day mature into productive major league ball players wearing a Cincinnati uniform is going to help and going to do for this ball club if you've got all the rest of these guys still in a very questionable mode. Uh, well, I don't know. It's a tough call to make. When you talk about, uh, and I've heard a lot of talk the last few days, we talked about it in here, I've heard it on other talk shows in and around town, uh, but you were there over the last 50 years, including even three years away uh, out of the booth, to see all the big guys, uh, a lot of big guys, who made their debut with all the hype. Um, and, you know, the, the, the two or three most recent that come to mind, whether it's Jay Bruce, whether it's Homer Bailey, uh, I thought Aroldis Chapman making his debut was a huge deal around here. But you go back to the Eric Davises and even before him, the Barry Larkins and so on and so forth, is Cruz's the biggest as far as just hype and pub and, and maybe all that's just because of social media in addition to just media coverage? Tom, I got to be honest with you. In a half century, um, come September the 26th, it'll be 50 years, that I have had affiliation with this ball club. And, and somebody asked me this very question yesterday. I cannot remember anybody getting the kind of hype that this kid has gotten. Now, I think you have to remember um, when you talk about when you start to compare uh, by way of naming other players that have come up in the past with this team, I don't think that there's ever been a player, uh, certainly in, in my time uh, affiliated with a ball club, that was considered to be the number one prospect in minor league baseball come to the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, you know, you mentioned Eric and Barry and all these other guys that have come up in the years in which I've been around the club. I don't think any of those guys were considered to be the single finest prospect potentially in minor league baseball today. So I think that goes along with the hype uh, that that uh, uh, Ellie Dela Cruz uh, brings to the table as the newest member of the Cincinnati Reds. And it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting to see him come up here 
And then, uh, you know, walk his first time up two nights ago, then double into the gap in right center his second time, walk again. And then last night, I don't know that I've ever seen a guy go around the bases as fast as he did on the three base hit. And then a monster home run, which people in Louisville and around the uh, Southern League or uh, International League have been accustomed to watching throughout the course of this season. The answer, in a, again, in a word, is no. I've never seen a kid so hyped in coming to this ball club. Um, as far as, you know, what's next, and, and I know De La Cruz just got here and, and, and he hadn't even been here 48 hours yet. But, you know, as good as De La Cruz's numbers were down there at AAA Louisville, uh, Encarnacion strands are every bit as good and in some cases better. Uh, you have Steer, who's playing well. Votto's on a rehab. You've got the whole kind of revolving thing as a designated hitter. They've even mixed Indian McLean into that role here the last couple of nights since De La Cruz came up. I mean, do you keep the train rolling from Louisville and bring him up here? Well, I think in, in Encarnacion Strand's case, uh, you're right. His offensive numbers across the board are probably better than De La Cruz's when he came up. But the one thing that De La Cruz has going for him that uh, Encarnacion Strand doesn't is that Encarnacion Strand's weakness is his defense. Uh, now, how much he's improved since the season began in Louisville? Uh, how much time he's spent as a DH and away from the field? Uh, I don't know. But I know that in spring training, there was a concern about where in the heck they were going to be able to play him uh, once he got to the major leagues. I guess the simplest thing would be first base. Well, you already got a long jab at first base right now, uh, uh, not this moment, but you're going to have when Votto comes back, if he comes back, because Strand has done a very, very nice job. I mean, uh, uh, Steer has done a very nice job over there. And so um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Encarnacion Strand. The thing about it is this kid, uh, Maybe he has nothing else to prove offensively in the International League. When you look at his numbers, you scratch your head and say, I don't know what more he can do. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and I saw him in spring training, and I mentioned this to you uh, way early in the season on this program. Uh, the first spring training game I saw uh, this past March, or maybe it was the end of February, he hit – Three balls in one game, harder than anybody I've ever seen hit a baseball in one game in three straight trips to the plate. Um, he can hit. There is absolutely unequivocally no question about his ability to hit. Now you got to find a place for him to play. Well, you know, I, I think ultimately, and you tell me if you agree or disagree with this, but, but if I had to look into a crystal ball and I don't have one, I lost it and never had one. Um, I think ultimately you're going to have to make a decision if you're the Reds. Uh, and, and the only way to truly make a decision is to get the guy up here. They're going to ultimately have to decide, um, I think, between Steer and Encarnacion Strand. Uh, because, uh, you know, although, you know, you, you bring up about the defense about Encarnacion Strand. Everybody said Steer couldn't play third base when they were watching him in spring training. And then once the regular season began, he started playing pretty well down there. Now they moved him Not off bad. there when Senzel came in. And everybody agrees that Senzel, Senzel's a, be, a better defender down at third. He's out right now. But it just seems to me that ultimately – um, you know, with, with, with the group of, of India and, and De La Cruz and McLean and, and that whole bunch and how it's going to shake out, um, that Encarnacion Strand, you're going to have to find at bats for him down there either at first as a designated hitter and, and then figure out who you like better between him and Steer, I think. Well, I mean, it, all, that statement right there is operating on the assumption that Joey Votto is not going to play. Well, and I, yeah, guarantee I, I, you. I, I, want to, I want to interrupt you there for a second here, because I think that you, you, I mean, you're spot on on this. And th th this is like the elephant in the room, right? That's I mean, correct. Because you've got and you, you've got this legendary player, one of the greatest players in the history of the franchise. He's in the final year of his contract. You have the sentimental atta attachment with Votto and so many thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe of fans. And, you know, I mean, 
Are you going to bring him up and sit him down if he gets to that point where he's ready? Are you going to bring him Not up and just put him in there? I mean, what do you and, and how is he then going to handle all that? I know it's all speculation, but if you're Nick Crawl and the baseball people, you have to at least be paying attention to this possibility. Cool. Are you kidding me? I guarantee you they're paying attention to it and they're scratching their head and wondering what the hell they're going to do. You're not going to bring Joey Votto back to this club uh, when he's ready to come. And, and I agree 100%. You let him give you that word. You let him give you the direction that I'm ready to come back. My body is ready to play. I'm ready to be a productive player. You don't put pressure on him. His career has been such that you owe him that. But you're not going to bring him up here and sit him on the bench. He is going to play. Now, whether they plug him into the DH role initially and, and, and you know, uh, Spencer Steer continues to man first base on a regular or semi-regular uh, position or lineup situation, and we're not even talking about Encarnacion Strand right now, but Joey Votto is going to get at bats, whether it be as a DH or whether it be as a, uh, as a first baseman. And you're going to have to live with whatever you see. And whatever you see will be a determining factor in how much or how little he plays after he's been in the lineup and has shown you what he is able to do right now. Well, you know what? Look, it's a good problem to have at the end of the day because, uh, you know, talent wins games. I mean, you've got to have Correct. desire. But, 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 I mean, the Reds have – talent and, and and de la cruz only two days it certainly is overshadowed in my opinion the bigger story on this reds team i think the biggest story on this reds team is the way mclean is playing yes matt mclean uh is an aberration as far as i'm concerned because he's come to the big leagues he immediately started to contribute he immediately gave you the impression I've been here for 10 years. He never missed a beat. He never showed any weakness, at least up to this point. And I don't know any reason why it would start now that maybe, you know, he was such a great player in college and a great player in our system and forced us to bring him up maybe earlier than we wanted to. But at the same time, uh, now we're seeing him at the big league level and there are some chinks in the armor. There are no chinks in this kid's armor. He can play. And he's going to be a major asset to this franchise. Uh, God forbid anything would interrupt this show that he's putting on right now, for want of a better term. I think it's very impressive what he's done. I think in the excitement generated by De La Cruz and, and uh, Andrew Abbott's great debut in the big yeah. leagues, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, people can't forget about the steady contribution that Matt McClain has made to give you the impression he's been around here forever. All right, we're going to get off topic here for a second because I want to get your opinion on a couple of things that we've been uh, kind of batting around here last couple of days with Paul and with, and with Reed and Dad. Say hello to Elliot and Jacob. They're part of the team here now as well. Guys, say good morning. Hello, guys. Hall of Famer. How are you, Marty? How, How are, are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you for asking. All right, Dad, here's the scenario. Bear with me for a second, okay? Tracy okay. Jones laid out this scenario the other day, uh, uh, and I want to lay this out to you, and then will they follow up? Okay. I got to blow my nose on this. Okay, no Go problem. Ahead. No problem. Go there ahead. Is, there is uh, a guy that Tracy Jones allegedly knows. His mother just passes away. His mother Tom, I know his... all about this. All right, you Let me know interrupt all about you. It. Okay, so the I woman that, that gets hired, right? She finds 15 And we're going to do a radio show on it. We're going to do a radio show on this. Okay, and I ask these four young uh, private school liberal elites what they would do. All four <laughs> the said they, they would take the 15 grand, stuff it in their pocket. <laughs> I said, and so did Tracy, said no chance I'm giving it back to the guy. What would Marty Brenneman do if you were the one being hired to clean out that house? I'd give the money back. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Who are you more upset with? Because I, we were talking about this before the show. I am livid with whoever this guy is. Okay? It's not his fifteen grand. 
He's getting ready to sell his mom's house, according to Tracy, for $2 million, which also isn't his money, right? And he gives this woman who's struggling to pay the rent $700? Yeah. That's a week. That's what that was the weakest part of the entire story. Although, um, this is the son of the man who died, and this he's selling the, the house. The, wo- the two- woman, who, the woman who died. Well, what well, woman, man, okay. whatever. All the right. case okay. Was. All right. Okay. The son. Yes. He he's selling this house for two million dollars, and he's going to reap the financial benefits once this house is sold. Because the person who previously owned it, his mom, has has passed away. Yep. And, and we're all operating on the assumption that he is the only sibling. We don't we don't know that that story as it was related to Tracy. Uh, there was no clear cut understanding as to whether he was the only child or whether there were others. But let's assume, based on what we know, that he's the only only child. This guy is going to make money off the sale of that house when it's sold. And for him to, quote, reward uh, the person uh, who gave the money back with $700, he's a cheap jerk. There's no doubt. I mean, we're talking about this today. I mean, if you were in a restaurant, right, and your server came over, I mean, this was $15,000, a 10% tip. I don't do math in public. But a 10% tip is 1500 10%. That's a weak tip to start with, but that's 10%. Right. He's barely over 5% for this woman. That's correct. I mean. That's correct. It's insane. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, here's the next one. And we're going to get to All this right. with the boys a little bit later. Uh, the De La Cruz home run last night. The kid who retrieves a ball is a high school linebacker from Moeller High School. Alex French is his name. He was in the newspaper and everything, so I'm not talking about some kid who people don't know who he is. Now, he has a chance. Yes, he is. And I've seen him play uh, football. We've done a number of his games right here on um, Chatterbox Sports. Outstanding player. Now, he had a chance after the game to give De La Cruz the ball back, uh, get a picture with all his buddies in De La Cruz. You just saw it there. He got a bat. He got a couple of batting gloves, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now, Correct. question is, if that was you that had that ball, is that enough? Is what enough? The picture. Get, getting a picture bat. taken. Yeah, and a bat and a couple of batting gloves. Uh, that ball's already well, been valued today at over $10,000. This is a 17-year-old kid. Well, he got screwed then. He got screwed then. If, if they valued at over ten thousand dollars and all he got was a bunch of damn pictures and a bat, no, that's that's not. Of course, now you also have to think, and I and I'm sure this young man is a quality kid, and I'm sure yeah. he thought about this. What kind of perception do the, the does the public have of me as a person when I'm going to say, well? You know, I'm 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 in a negotiable I'm in a negotiating mood, and a, a bat and a picture is not good enough. Now, what are people going? I'm sure that probably has to cross one's mind if they're thinking that what they're offering me is not nearly what I, they should be offering me. Uh, so I I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. And uh, you know, he's a football player. Uh, what value would a picture have 50 years from now or 20 years from now when Ailey De La Cruz is still considered to be one of the great players in the game and all I got to show for is a picture with me and my buddies with him on the night in which he hit his first big league home run. All right. Okay. I knew the Hall of Famer would have an opinion on that. We're going to get into all this because, man, I mean, if there is ever a moment in your life that was built for negotiation, I mean, that was it as a young man. And yep. some can say he did the right thing. I maintain it's not Ellie De La Cruz's ball. I mean, God bless him, he hit it, but it isn't his ball. Correct. And he just gave it to him for batting gloves, a bat, and a picture. Yeah. All right. I mean, I could have used some of that cash to pay for my college if that was me. No thankfully, question about that. Thankfully, you and Mom were around. I was just free. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Man. 
That's right. A lot of freeloaders around that Bretman house. I'll tell you that right now. They're everywhere. Oh, really? That's a flash bulletin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else on your mind? Anything else you want to get into? You normally like kind of, you know, going off on one thing or another. Anything else happening out there? Well, I'm going to miss you guys the next few weeks because I'm leaving next week to go to Europe. And uh, oh. if I can figure out a way to make this happen while I'm in Prague or uh, I'm cruising the Danube or I'm in Budapest, I will definitely do that. Uh, I, I've got to check out the... The, the technical aspect of doing something like this when you're in a foreign country. I don't know whether it's doable or not, but I'm going to check it out. And if it is, then I definitely will check in with you guys. So you just mentioned a couple of the places you're going. What, what, where is this trip? Where overall are you going? What's the whole sort of layout? Well, we're flying to Prague and we're spending a couple of days there, then get getting on a bus and going, I don't know, three or four hours to, I think it's Regensburg, which is a medieval town. Uh, or to Nuremberg and get on a, a river boat, a uh, river boat, and cruise the Danube and stop off in various and sundry spots along the way, and we'll end up uh, culminating our trip, uh, docking in, in Budapest, and we'll be there for a couple of days, and then we'll fly to Washington D.C. and watch our, our wonderful young lady Grace Cook go into the Naval Academy. Yes, indeed. That would be, uh, yep. um, yes, my uh, step-niece, she is uh, headed to the Naval Academy. Well, well you know what? Um, uh, Budapest uh, looks like a beautiful place. I'm just kind of looking. Yes. I, I've heard it's a great place. Uh, I've heard the same thing about Prague. I'm yes. sure that there'll be a lot of people that know uh, who Marty Brenneman is over there in Prague. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a big, no, it's a big, you know, it's a big, it's a big cultural place. I mean, I'm sure there, well, there are a lot of people it, very it's highly a, educated, dialed in on all kinds of sports. They're good. If it's as big culturally as it seems to be, then my chances of being recognized will be grossly minimized. Culture and Marty Brenneman don't go hand in hand. All right. You got me? All right. I got you. Okay. I understand. I understand. Well, thanks for the time today and safe travels. Godspeed ahead. We'll be thinking of you, praying for you. Stay safe. Well, I'll see you before I leave, pal. All right. All right. I love, love you. you. You take it easy. See Have you guys. Rest of your day. Thank you.